A content warning for our listeners, general discussions of sexual violence, including impacts of trauma and healing modalities will be discussed. If you need support or resources, please visit survivors.org. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Survivors.org podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Color Street Nails, a creative beauty brand with limitless possibilities. I'm your host, Angela Rose, the founder of PAVE, promoting awareness, victim empowerment. I am so excited to welcome our guest, Linda Vester. A little bit about Linda. She was a foreign news correspondent and anchor on NBC and MSNBC for over a decade. As an Arabic speaker, she was often sent to war zones. After covering the Rwandan genocide, she produced the award-winning documentary, Back Home. In 2005, she left television to raise her four children. Then in 2017, during the Me Too movement, she revealed that she had been sexually harassed by NBC's Tom Brokaw. As a survivor of complex PTSD, she's now a mental health advocate and leads a foundation dedicated to helping people get a highly effective treatment for PTSD, which we're going to talk about today, called SGB. Welcome, Linda. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. So Linda, I always like to start off our podcast by talking a little bit about you. I know faith and family is very important to you. So just want the listeners to get to know you as a person. Tell me what sets your soul on fire. What's important to you? Well, I would say family for sure. I have a big family. I have together, my husband and I have four children, um, plus one adopted, plus his three boys. So a total of eight. Wow. Um, so it's a big, noisy family. Uh, with two dogs. Um, my faith is very important to me. Um, uh, and I feel like that's an important part of resilience. And I'm, I'm sort of late to that party, but God tapped on my shoulder after mm-hmm. my insistence for many years that I was an atheist. Um, and that's a big part of my life too. And um, really helping people with um, mental health get access to treatment, that's a really important part of it. And being mom, really, um, to my kiddos. Well, that's so beautiful. You bravely spoke out in 2017 about the harassment that you experienced with Tom Brokaw. And I know that you were not always met with a lot of support. Can you talk about the experience of coming forward and maybe some of the re-traumatization that you experienced as well? Sure. Um, I would say actually that was some of the worst trauma I experienced. And I'm not really sure why, because I have seen some terrible, terrible things in war, covering wars, and um, and experienced a lot of terrible things and nearly died a, a few times. And and yet, somehow, the experience of uh, revealing what happened to me at the hands of Tom Brokaw and when he tried to force me to do things with him that I didn't want to do, um, the bringing that out, telling the story, and then the blowback I got um, was traumatizing in ways that I just didn't expect and really took me down and and took me into a very dark place. And part of it was um, this really crazy, nasty screed that he leaked to the media afterward, denying everything and victim blaming and shaming. Um, But also what people may not know is that, you know, on a daily basis, I was getting telephone threats from his lawyer, um, threatening to um, have that he, quote unquote, had people ready to uh, tell people, tell things publicly about my integrity as a journalist and my integrity as a woman. And I think we can all read what that code is. Uh, None of it was true, but that didn't stop me from being terrified by it because it's just, it's just frightening. Um, And then having some women within NBC kind of being, from what I heard, being compelled to sign a letter of support for him. Um, So basically, you know, the corporation making women essentially take sides with him uh, and women who I knew who I had worked with. uh, It was it was creepy and scary and unnerving. So it was that was a rough time. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's so brave. And I want to know for you, was there a moment when you knew that you wanted to speak out? Because speaking out is certainly not for everybody. But I want to hear from you. Was there like a moment that you thought to yourself, I want to shout out the silence? Well, it wasn't me wanting to shout. It was actually, um, it was the morning that the Matt Lauer story broke. Um, and that was all over front page news. And a, only a very few f- close friends knew of what happened to me 
at the hands of Tom Brokaw. I didn't really tell many people. But one of them called me and said, are you going to tell? It might be important. It might help. And I was processing all of that. And it, it took me some time to think about it. But then I decided that because I, I had access to a good lawyer and PR support and so on, that it was up to me to use my voice to tell my story in hopes of maybe giving other women courage to tell their stories um, and, and maybe create some collective empowerment. So I didn't want to, uh, but I felt that it was my duty to. And thank you for speaking out. How did you feel when you found out that there were other women impacted by your perpetrator? Relieved, because for many years, I had held this, I, I, I had been confused for years, wondering, why me? I, I knew I wasn't giving off any signs. I knew I was very, I was very straightforward at work. I was very work-oriented and no business. And so I didn't know why, why I had been targeted and I was always afraid that it was only me. And I definitely, you know, blamed myself. Like, how could I be so dumb? And, you know, all those things that women sometimes do. And then when two other women came forward, um, I felt so relieved because I thought, okay, there's a pattern. It wasn't just me. And um, one of them spoke to me in detail. In fact, she called me. She, we were put together by mutual, uh, mutual acquaintance. And when she told me her story, I was, I was so viscerally unnerved by it that after I got off the phone with her, I went to the bathroom and threw up. You know, I, I'm so inspired by your journey. And I think one thing that really struck me was when we spoke originally and you talked to me about how you have had guns to your head in doing the work that you have done, being a, a war zone news correspondent, but dealing with the the trauma, not just of the abuse and the harassment, but the aftermath was, was even worse, you told me, than literally having a gun to your head. And so what I would love to do is to talk about how you have a very happy and joyful life. And I want to talk about how, how did we get there? If you can give some advice to survivors, sure. that would be great. I mean, I will, uh, I, I, I don't have magic answers. We, you know, we all find our own path, but I will share openly what, what worked for me. And, and I tried a bunch of things. I mean, I definitely tried, uh, you know, at talk therapy, I, I remain in talk therapy, which I find hugely helpful. Um, my faith is really important. Uh, the book Resilience by Stephen Southwick, um, it's called The Resilience, The Science of Mastering Life's Greatest Challenges. I think I've read and reread probably five times and I continue to highlight it and I give it to every trauma survivor I know because I, I find it, I think it's the definitive work on discovering resilience and post-traumatic growth. Um, but, you know, definitely tried medications, nah, uh, IV ketamine, Helped a little. Um, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulation helped somewhat. But the thing that really worked and took my trauma away, I mean changed my life, was something called Stelly Ganglion Block. It's SGB for short. And I found out about it by accident from a friend who is a uh, SEAL Team 6. So, you know, one of the baddest of the bad, but, you know, he was visiting our family for the summer. And I said, um, Nate, how is it that you're the happiest Navy SEAL I've ever met? And uh, he said, oh, well, in 2012, I got this neck shot called SGB. And I was like, what? What is that? You know, hold everything. Tell me. And so he told me and I looked it up and I tracked down the doctor in Chicago who has pioneered the technique. And I said, I, I need to have this. And so um, with some trepidation, I mean, I, I, I recorded a video beforehand saying, like, what if this doesn't work? You know, ugh, then what? Um, but it did. And it set me free. And uh, it was the transformation was so powerful that my husband said, oh, my gosh, I've got my wife back. And my children continued to say, thank you, mom, for doing that. And so I've since gifted it to several people. And my husband and I set up a scholarship um, through erasePTSDnow.org for people who can't afford it 
to get this because, um, you know, through further research, the um, the efficacy rate of this is 82 to 92 percent, which is higher than anything else out there. This is a procedure that has been safely used and FDA approved since the 1920s by the FDA and has been used for pain syndromes. And it was an accidental discovery that it worked for PTSD. Um, so it's totally safe. Um, and I even allowed two of my children, teenage children, uh, to get it after traumas they suffered. So, you know, if I let my own children, you know, it's safe. Um, and I, and I really want this word about this to get out for people who can't afford it to go to stellacenter.com for people who can't afford it to go to erase PTSD dot, uh, erase PTSD now.org to apply for the scholarship and for people to donate, um, to contribute to that scholarship, because there's a lot of trauma walking around right now. Um, and I am hereby issuing a challenge that anyone who wants to donate to the scholarship to erase PTSDnow.org, I will match your gift dollar for dollar. I'm saying it right here in front of God and everybody. Um, and, uh, and I want to get that out there. And to anyone who wants to donate, even if you don't have a whole lot Maybe go on, you know, smile.amazon.com. So when you make your Amazon purchases, you're, and you put in erasePTSDnow.org, anything you buy, there's a, a donation given to the nonprofit. So just any little way you can help even donate air miles for people. Um, because so many people have trauma in general post COVID that there's a lot of people who are, who need treatment and, and need to know about it. I would love if you wouldn't mind sharing with the audience a little bit about what was PTSD like for you before the treatment? How did that manifest itself? I know that there was, you mentioned a lot of shame and humiliation, but how did that manifest itself in your life? I had a lot of different things. So I would say um, the one thing that really affected my family was uh, I had a hair trigger temper and probably, you know, definitely some war and 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 violent crime victims will recognize what that feels like um and that could really that was just damaging um but i also was hugely sensitive to noise like so a, a car backfiring would send me running for cover um i was very avoidant of crowds uh i was very avoidant of any shows or books or movies that involved sexual trauma couldn't do it um uh, I had a lot of repeat nightmares um, of being of being coerced by Tom Brokaw and being chased by him and so on, um, and disruptive sleep and anxiety and depression. And would you say after you had that treatment, was it automatic? Was it a week later? Talk to me about after you had that shot. And for the listeners, maybe you can talk about the actual procedure too that might not understand that it's an actual injection. Sure. So it's uh, it's pretty simple. And, you know, basically I've had fillings that are more invasive <laughs> and scary. It's super easy. You you know, you go to the doctor who's trained in the procedure. They You can opt to have a sedative, you know, um, I did because... I, you know, I did. I wanted to kind of be mellow when it happened, but they give you an IV, and then you lie down on the table, and it's ultrasound guided, and it's two injections inside of your neck, right here at the C4 and C6 level, on the right side. Um, you can also a week or you know a minimum of 24 hours later get it done on the left side. Um, I did. I opted to have both sides because what they're finding is that. If your trauma is only in adulthood, that's generally the right side. But sometimes if you have childhood trauma, it's the left side. So I opted for both. The first first one, I woke up and I felt good, but I was like, well, maybe it's the anesthesia. I don't know. And then within 30 minutes, I started spontaneously laughing. And I just felt happier. And, all you know, I, I came home and I looked at the front yard and I saw a rabbit and I was like, oh, bunny, there's a bunny in the yard. And, you know, all of a sudden just kind of, I felt this access to the joy, pure access to joy that like the, the way children feel that I hadn't felt since I was a child. And later that night I walked out um, on my, uh, at my backyard and somebody was playing classical music. And suddenly the music sounded so beautiful that I burst into tears of joy. 
and I felt such relief. Um, and so I would say that, like, if I had to quantify, I would say my PTSD symptoms were 70% better. And I was happy that, like, wow, a 70% improvement was great. And if that's all I get, I'm good. But I still want to go for the other side. So I did a week later. And um, I woke up immediately laughing. Um, and I knew then it wasn't the anesthesia. And I felt like I had been carrying around this backpack, this invisible backpack weight that, you know, that the, nobody could see that it was just this weight of the world. And I felt that I was putting it down once and for all. And it felt great. Um, and then, so and it was just immediate. And, and then over weeks, I started to feel subtle additions, like things like people who had harmed me over the years. I was just spontaneously able to let go and forget in ways that like before then I had been like, I'm sorry, I'm not forgiving you. Thanks very much. You know, I know people talk about forgiveness, but no can do. And all of a sudden I felt like I could and I was free. Wow. Yeah. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I think the notion of forgiveness is so hard for people sometimes to understand, but I always say, you know, we forgive not to condone and not for the other person, but by forgiving, we can help free our own selves and our own soul because, you know, it takes a lot of energy to have that negativity. But if, you know, you can replace that with, like you said, joy and spontaneity. And, and I love how you talked about having like that childlike playfulness and that joy in your life. I'm so grateful. And so what advice do you have for other people, maybe other survivors that might just be starting their healing journey? What advice do you have for them in terms of healing? Honestly, I would say if, if your trauma involves anxiety, I would actually s suggest that people start first by looking up stellacenters.com, stellacenters.com, um, and then, and or erase ptsdnow.org. The reason why I say that is because removing that trauma and resetting your fight or flight in your brain, and that's what the shot does, is that, you know, it, it basically... It's like a reboot for your mental computer, like hitting control, alt, delete. Your brain gets to reset and go back to factory settings, so to speak. Um, and then afterward, the talk therapy, the reading, the faith, all that stuff comes afterward. The reason why I say do the trauma, you know, uh, shot first is because it like it moves the thousand pound boulder out of your way and allows the rest of the stuff, the long term therapy, talk therapy faith work, et cetera, et cetera, just makes it so much more successful. Um, so that's why I strongly recommend it uh, as kind of a first step. And if, and again, I, I'm big on medical efficacy and safety. So I wouldn't say that if I weren't completely convinced of its safety and efficacy. And in fact, my husband and I have an endowed a very large research study through NYU to further document its efficacy um, and really then be able to get the, the word out to the public in a grand scale. Um, and that study's underway right now. Oh, I can't wait for the results of that. Thank you so much. So my last question for you, Linda, is I know you didn't have support from everybody in your life. There were some people that were supportive and some people that weren't so supportive. So my question to you is for some of our listeners that might have somebody in their life who's a survivor, what advice do you have for somebody when somebody discloses, what's the best way to react? Wow. Okay. So based on, you know, I had a couple of uh, female relatives, specifically a sister-in-law who is, who did a lot of damage with her reaction. Um, and even a psychiatrist, a female psychiatrist, I swear to you, a female psychiatrist, my, my psychiatrist, uh, I, I stopped seeing her immediately, but she literally, when I told her, and it took so much for me to tell her, she said, oh, on some level, you must have enjoyed it. And I about fainted um, and I was, I was gone, right? Uh, so, so I would say for anyone who is, on the receiving end of that, someone revealing that to you, check whatever judgment you have, set it aside. Assume that it is taking a tremendous amount of courage for that person to share this painful thing with you. And 
just hear them with love and support. Know that the, that it's taking all the courage they have in their bodies to tell you and say, thank you for sharing this with me. Tell me how I can support you. What can I do for you to give you strength? That is so beautiful. And that is such sage advice. Linda, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. You are such a beacon of light and hope and I just, your joy radiates from you. So thank you so much for sharing. And for anybody that might be triggered, survivors.org is here for you. Also erase PTSDnow.org. We're actually very proud to partner with them on an upcoming campaign. We are so happy that you joined us today, Linda. And just remember everybody that's listening to love yourself, support each other, and together we can change the world. Thank you all so much. Thank you. For all survivors and their loved ones tuning in, please remember that you are not alone and it's not your fault. If you need support or resources, please visit us at survivors.org.